Hi everyone, I'm T.A. Barron. Welcome to my writing room. I would love to read to you now chapter four from my book, Tree Girl. Weeks passed. Anna's first radishes poked out of the ground and wrinkly leaves softer than thistledown sprouted from the branches by the forest edge. Aye, and how she loved to rub them on her cheek as she danced down the beach, kicking up sand. But none of this meant as much to Anna as her growing desire to see the high willow, to touch it with her eyes, since she couldn't with her hands. <sighs> At least once a day, sure as the turning of the tide, she climbed old Burl. Of course, she always waited until the master had finished his morning grumbles eaten a slab of smoked fish, and lugged all his nets and gear down to the boat, looking like a hermit crab with too big a house on his back. Then, after his rowboat had slipped into the lagoon and dropped over the horizon, she did what she, he had forbidden. She climbed those branches, and she looked to the far ridge, to the tree where she'd been found. Sometimes she saw what looked like an uplifted branch poking through the mist, or a faint hint of green, or a shadowy shape behind the clouds. But she never saw the whole tree, not once. Flying fish eggs, that was annoying. And something else bothered her too, something strange. Odd things just kept happening. Just as odd as her upside down basket, or that rippling laughter from the woods and just as hard to explain. First came her sandals. She'd set them out to dry in the sun after a, a walk in the shallows to collect a few sea urchins. Then a moment later, the sandals were gone. They had simply vanished from the beach. Losing her sandals by itself didn't bother her much. She usually walked barefoot anyway. It was the strangeness, the mystery of it all, and the mystery clung to her like pine sap to a beetle's back. Then came the day when she spotted some rowan leaves, a whole bunch of them growing out of a spruce tree at the forest edge. Now that was strange. So strange she couldn't resist stepping over the bramble bushes that bordered the woods just to get a closer look. She blinked in surprise. The rowan branch had been spliced onto the spruce I, by someone with clever hands, and a sense of humor, too. On another morn, the sea looked as calm as a wide blue eye, staring up at the clouds. Anna spun some turns on the sand, which left a swirl of prints behind. Then she noticed some other marks on the wet sand, marks she hadn't made herself. On the spot where the master's boat lay at night, she saw a rough circle, and lots of crooked lines. Could it be a face? She moved closer. Suddenly, she started to laugh. It was the face of the master himself. Aye, that it was. She shook her head, amazed. By the sea and stars, who did this? Not the master, that is certain. She fell to her knees beside the drawing, and she traced the lines made by something about the size of her own finger, was it just chance? The trail of a crab or some stones jostled at high tide? No, the likeness right down to the scowl was just too perfect. As she often did these days, she glanced suspiciously over at old Burl. The tree just stood there, though, and seemed to ignore her. She narrowed her eyes. If Burl hadn't done it himself, he knew who had. But who could it be? And was it the same person who'd stolen her sandals? As if reading her thoughts, the fir tree stirred. Some branches creaked or chuckled. Anna watched a moment longer, then turned back to the face in the sand. She lowered her voice and did her best imitation of the master's gruff voice. Thunder and blast, girl. Why be you pouring that sand in me skillet? Be you lame in the head, Rowana? The face seemed to scowl even more. Behind her, old Burl chuckled again, as did Anna. 
Eagle jumped down from his perch on her shoulder. He landed with a splat on the sand. Then he strutted right over to the master's chin and started to whistle angrily. Watch yourself, you gall-blasted bird. It was hard to keep going without laughing out loud, but Anna managed somehow. Or else I'll feed you to the fish. Bet your scrawny tail feathers I will. At this, Eagle flew into a rage. He jumped onto the drawing's nose and started pecking it hard with his tiny beak. Anna smiled at the little warrior. She gathered him up despite all the nips to her hand. It's all right now, my friend. You scared him so much, he won't talk anymore. Eagle paced across her palm. He didn't seem at all convinced. Here you go, a reward for your bravery. She reached into her apron pocket and pulled out an old oak leaf wrapped around a sticky slab of honeycomb. She peeled back the leaf, broke off an edge, and offered it to him. But the valiant bird wouldn't turn away from his enemy. Who could, after all, just be playing dead? Anna took a bite of honeycomb herself. She chewed thoughtfully. All right, then. What if I rub him out? Then you'll know he's really gone. Eagle chirped several times. She put the bird back on her shoulder and then gave him a bit of honeycomb. And then she reached over to the drawing. But just as she was about to touch it, a sharp wind gusted. All along the forest edge, trees twisted and groaned, waving their branches. Old Master Burl's lower branches slapped the sand. Suddenly, Anna's sunbonnet woven from willow shoots the spring before, flew off her head. She leaped to catch it, but too late. The bonnet spun in the air, then sailed over the brambles and into the forest. It landed on the very tip of the spruce tree's grafted branch. Thundering thumbnails, she bounded after it, jumping over a bramble bush. At the instant she reached the bonnet, though, a new gust snatched it and carried it over to an elm tree a little farther into the forest. There it rested on a lower branch, quivering on the wind. She swallowed. Then she glanced back over her shoulder at the cottage and the safety of the shore. Eagle, clutching her shoulder, flapped his good wing anxiously. He tried to whistle, but his beak was fused together from his bite of honey, so he could only make a stifled squawk. Hush now, she told the bird. I don't want to go in there either. But really, we're still so close to the beach. Anna turned back to the forest. She peered at the bonnet, sitting on the elm, dappled with sunlight. It was only 15 or 20 steps away. Again, she glanced back at the shore and then back at the bonnet. Took me two months of work to weave that hat, she grumbled. Her fist clenched, squeezing the remains of the honeycomb. And no silly old wind is going to take it away from me now. She sucked in her breath and stepped into the forest.